The Honourable Member from Summerside South Drive. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the last several weeks, I've been contacted by islanders who are devastated by the ban on flavours after using <coughs> flavoured vaping to quit smoking. I would like to share a story of one of the many islanders who reached out to me since I asked questions in the legislature. Quote, Hey Steve, my mother, who is 65, has smoked cigarettes for 40 years and was able to quit cigarettes four years ago by vaping and has since almost reduced her nicotine concentration to zero. I agree with the age increase, but not the ban on flavored vape products altogether. I fear it will basically force my mother and many others in a similar situation to her back to cigarettes, end quote. That was from Chelsea Pallone. We need to recognize when harm is being caused to islanders and work to ensure policy encourages harm reduction. This was my primary concern when the legislation was presented to me for consultation, and I was reassured that it would not be a ban on flavors. I implore government to reconsider its flavor ban and put the well-being of islanders at the forefront. Harm reduction means acknowledging that the use of addictive substances is occurring and that some methods of consumption are more harmful than others. For instance, we all agree that safe consumption sites for injection are a harm reduction tool that the province should be providing. Why then are we taking away a valuable tool in harm reduction for tobacco smokers? Ironically, the only flavour that is still permitted is the one most closely tied to smoking, tobacco flavour. Tobacco smoking kills half its users, according to the World Health Organization. Reducing harm in light of these statistics should be at the forefront of government policy. The flavour regulations need to change, and the lens of harm reduction in Islanders' well-being needs to be at the forefront. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.